Okay, good evening, everyone. Uh, this is the second uh, Twitter space that uh, LTU Physics is organizing. The first one was on neuromorphic computing. Uh, our plan is to organize a Twitter space whenever there is some breakthrough research from uh, NTU Physics. So this time we have a breakthrough uh, research report from a group of uh, physicists from NTU Physics. So it will be on 3D photonic uh, shell insulators. So the speakers will be Professor Chong Dong, Professor Pai Lei Chong, and a PhD student who is uh, just about to graduate, uh, Mr. Liu Guike. So without further ado, let me invite uh, the uh, three researchers to come and present uh, their work. Thank you. Please go ahead. Right, okay. Uh, so yeah, thanks, Brian, for this invitation. Uh, first of all, okay, uh, this Twitter space, okay, I'm still new to this Twitter space. Okay, uh, this is uh, still the, uh, uh, this is still my first time, okay, to present in this uh, Twitter space over there. Um, yeah, I, I feel, okay, it's really <laughs> an interesting experience. Um, so okay, uh, over here we are going to talk about uh, our work. Okay, so research work about uh, 3D chain, uh, photonic chain insulator. Basically, we implemented a, a, a topological uh, material uh, with light. Okay, it's, it's not it's not about electrons, but it's related. Okay, so we are in, we have implemented a material uh, 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 which is topological and uh, uh, with purely uh, electromagnetic waves. So let me first explain a little bit what is. Topology, okay, so, so because we will keep talking about topological material all the time. Uh, for example, if you look at the first slide, right, the first slide we have posted online, uh, in our daily life we can see a lot of objects. For example, your pen, right, your mobile, your uh, computer, a chair, okay, a banana, okay, fruits, or whatever. So of course, if you if you want to classify these objects into different classes, right, different groups, okay, so you can do this classification based on, for example, the color, right? Different colors belong to different uh, groups, right? And you can also do that based on their weight, right? The heavier objects, okay, and then there's the lighter objects, and you can also do that based on the the shape, right? This is a triangular shape, this is a, a, a spherical shape, okay, so on and so forth. So one possibility, okay, another possibility is that you can start to count uh, how many holes do they have, right? For example, uh, a donut, right? A donut has one hole, okay, and then a sphere has no hole, right? And then you can also imagine there's a, a double hole, okay, this is a, a double donut, there are two holes, okay? So you can start to, you can use the number of holes, okay, you can use the number of holes as a parameter, to describe all the objects and then classify them, okay? So all the objects with no holes belong to one group, okay? All the objects with one hole will belong to uh, another group, okay? Two holes belong to another, uh, uh, the third group, so on and so forth. So different number of holes can, uh, can help you to classify these objects, okay? Daily life objects. So what does that mean that, okay, uh, objects be uh, all objects with one hole with one hole belong to one group, okay? Or we say this is a one topology. So what does that mean, right? For example, okay, in the second slide, you can see that uh, if you have a cup, okay? If you have a cup with one handle, so you can see that there's one hole over there, okay? So based on our previous description, it shall belong to the same topology with the donut, okay? Because we know the donut has one hole at the center. So you can see that, okay, imagine this cup, right? This cup is uh, made of, uh, I don't know, rubber, okay, whatever, right? So you can, you can continuously deform, deform it, you can stretch it, okay? You can squeeze it, okay? You can do, do whatever you want to it, right? So you can see that if you gradually, gradually change the shape, okay? Gradually change the shape of the cup, okay? Gradually, so you can see that every time you change a little bit, every time you change a little bit, and eventually, you can continuously deform the shape to become like a donut over here, okay, eventually. So you can see that this procedure, okay, during this procedure of deformation, the number of holes doesn't change. It's still, it's still there's just one hole over here, right? So you can see that during this procedure, the topology doesn't change, okay? The topology doesn't change. So we say they are topologically equivalent. And, and over here, of course, you can see that the, the shape has changed, right? The shape has changed. The size has changed, right? And you can also even change the, the, the color, it doesn't matter, but, but, but 
okay, doing in 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 this entire procedure, the topology doesn't change, meaning that the number of holes doesn't change. Okay, all right. So you can see that over here, we do not concern too much about the details of the shape, the size, whatever. What we concern is only the number of holes, which is a global property. Okay, global property. As long as the number of holes doesn't change, okay, we say the topology is uh, maintained. Okay, of course, if you change from a one donut, right, the, a donut to a double donut, then you can see that the number of holes change, right? So we call this as a topological uh, transition. So if you move to the second, uh, the third slide, right, the third slide is correct. So you can see that, okay, this concept of topology has already been introduced into condensed metaphysics, okay, uh, which has produce a lot of uh, exchange and, and very strange materials, right? Uh, you probably have heard of the so-called topological insulators, okay? So topological insulator is a kind of material that is uh, insulating the bulk, but conductive, but, but it, can, it can be conductive on the surface, okay? I always see that they are like the, uh, you know, the fried uh, ice cream, right? The fried ice cream, which can be uh, very cold inside, but, but very hot outside, right? Okay, right. So uh, this kind of topological concepts, okay, the introduction of topological concept into condensed matter has been recognized by the Nobel Prize in, two, uh, in physics of 2016. Uh, they were uh, awarded to three pioneers okay, at that time. And actually, okay, if you talk about history, and actually you can, you can, uh, the, the, um, the, the, the first topological phenomena, you can trace, trace it back to uh, 1980s, okay? So you can see the Nobel Prize in physics uh, uh, in uh, 1985 was awarded to the discovery of uh, uh, quantum Hall effect, okay? The quantized Hall effect, okay? Basically, it's a quantum phenomena, and uh, uh, this is the first phenomena that people use the, uh, 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 the, the topological concept to describe. Over here, okay, uh, you can also say that this phenomenon can be described with a number of holes, one, two, three, four, so on, so forth. Of course, they have a different name, right, in physics, we call it a chain number, okay, so it's, it's, a, it's an integer, it's similar to the number of holes, zero, one, two, three, four, so on, so forth. And actually, um, in 1998, uh, okay, there's a, another Nobel Prize, okay, also, also awarded to the quantum Hall effect. And they found that, okay, it's not just a, a, a integer, a 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, so on, so forth, right? They also have, you can also have fractions, right? Fraction to describe it, okay? So this is so-called fractional uh, quantum Hall effect, okay? So basically, you can see that the quantum Hall effect has already been uh, awarded two times Nobel Prize, right? Nobel Prizes. And if you count the previous, uh, the most recent 2016 Nobel Prize, right? So you can see the quantum Hall effect, okay, I can see that uh, there are already three times, right? All right, so you can see that, okay, if you uh, move to uh, the slide six, okay, uh, we can have a comparison, okay? We can have a comparison uh, uh, for, all the, for all the typical uh, quantum Hall effect, okay? Uh, yeah, so you can see the, f the first one is the, the, ho is the quantum Hall effect, okay? So the quantum Hall, in, in the quantum Hall effect, basically it's a, a two-dimensional uh, material, okay, two-dimensional material, where there are a lot of electrons inside, and then you apply an external magnetic field, okay, perpendicular external magnetic field, okay. So you can see that, okay, uh, inside the bulk, uh, these electrons, they will not move, okay, they will not move, they will stay, they will stay in the same place. But uh, uh, if you consider the uh, if you consider the, the the electrons, okay, at the edge, okay, so you can see that these electrons, they can move in the unidirectional way, okay, so it's like a one-way fashion, okay, it's like a one-way highway, right? If you imagine the electron, they also drive cars, right? So you can, they will drive the cars on a wide one-way uh, highway along the edges, okay? So uh, they will, uh, in the figure, you can see this electron, they can move in a uh, clockwise, clockwise fashion. <laughs> so this is so-called quantum Hall effect, all right? And then uh, uh, we also have the quantum spin Hall effect. So what does that mean? <laughs> Uh, it turns out that you can use uh, the electrons, right? The electrons, they have, we know they have mass, they have charge, they can also have spin, okay? So you can basically treat them as a spinning top, okay? So imagine that you have a, uh, okay, imagine this is a box, right? This is a box, okay? You, you treat this uh, 2D material, 2D example as a, as, a, as a box. And then you launch a spinning top, okay? You launch a spinning top. So if the top, okay, is located in the center, it will not move because it will just spin, okay, at a, uh, spin in the same position. But if the top uh, gets close, gets close to the boundary, right? So you can see that the spinning, the spin of this top, okay, will start to interact with the boundary. So the spin of the of the of the of the top will drive it to move 
okay, either clockwise or counterclockwise. Okay, the direction it depends on the spinning direction of the top, right? I think uh, my uh, my daughter and my my son, okay, they are playing this kind of game, right? Using using a spin top, which is very interesting. And then the last one is the uh, so basically over here for the spin for the quantum spin Hall effect, you can use the spin, right? Uh, uh, to uh, exhibit the same phenomena, okay, the similar phenomena, uh, without using the magnetic field, okay, you, without using the magnetic field. So the last member over here, uh, we list over here, is a quantum anomalous Hall effect. So what does that mean? Uh, basically, you can treat the entire object, uh, the entire sample, as a magnet, okay, as a magnet, magnet itself, okay. So in this way, you don't need to. You don't need to exert any external magnetic field, all right? Because the sample itself is a magnet, okay? So we can see that over here, the electron, they can also move in a one-way fashion, okay? So you still have a one-way fashion, so the electron will move in a, only in a clockwise direction, okay? Previously, okay, I forgot to mention, for the quantum spin high effect, you can treat them as a two copies of the quantum high effect. So if you have... <coughs> Uh, imagine that you have a lot of spinning tops, right? If they if they uh, they are spinning cl clockwise, then you can treat them as uh, uh, as if the uh, they follow the quantum Hall effect with a magnetic field applied upward. If the for the for all the uh, spinning tops that are spinning with a counterclockwise clock, counter direction, then they correspond to the quantum Hall effect where you have a magnetic field uh, 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 applied downward. Okay, so. Uh, yeah, so for the quantum anomalous Hall effect, you can see that you do not need the external magnetic field, right? So this is a huge, this is a, a huge difference compared to the quantum Hall effect. So this quantum anomalous Hall effect is also called chain insulators, okay? Chain insulators. Right, so uh, I think I can give a, a brief summary. Uh, yeah, for sorry, Bailey. Uh, hey. mm, hey. Since, okay, so I, normally I would not in interrupt a, a talk, but since this is a different format, uh, yeah. Let me let me let. It's supposed to be a conversation, right? So, yes. Wouldn't, wouldn't people say that you have not explained what's topological about it, right? Because, and I don't know the answer to this. I, I often I often have trouble explaining to laymen also, right? So 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 right. We, we always start with this coffee cup and the donut are topologically equivalent. So the number of holes is relatively straightforward to understand what's what's topological about that. But then 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 we we always make this sudden jump and we say, okay, this material is topological, you know, but we don't, how do you think we should try to, 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 to answer this question? What's topological about the material? What was the equivalent of number of holes and why, why is it related to all this thing about churn numbers and so forth, churn, churn insulators and so forth, right? Right. Um, okay. Uh, first of all, you know, we, we know that the, um, Okay, if you consider a material, right? The material is uh, consists of a lot of electrons, right, in, inside. So when the ele when one electron moves inside the material, okay, they can uh, they can only ex they can um, they can possess a range of particular freq uh, particular energies, okay. So they can exist in a range of frequencies, like okay, different ranges of frequencies. So this kind of different range of frequencies are called so called energy bands, right? Yeah. And then it turns out that, okay, for this kind of particular um, energy bands, you can uh, describe them with a topology, okay? Uh, yeah, I, I, I agree that it's quite difficult to, to describe what is the topology over here. <laughs> I guess we can say uh, that, you know, you know that there's one ingredient, right, which is the momentum, right? So uh, for each band, energy band, the electrons are actually moving around with different momenta, right? right. And each momentum is actually a different quantum state, and the wave functions have their, uh, uh, you know, the wave functions have uh, uh, are described by quantum mechanics, and they have a kind of a, a phase associated with them. Uh, and it is this kind of like because they all so for each moment, each value of the momentum, there's one quantum state associated with it, which corresponds to a some kind of a wave of electron that's moving through the material. Right. Correct, so so that's, that's, that's certainly one ingredient. Uh, and and, and that, that turns out to be important to our work as well, this idea of momentum space, right? Uh, and I guess, you know, you know to, to us mathematically, it's, you know, it's a few lines of mathematical derivation to say that, okay, elect wave functions living on the momentum space, there's a way to define uh, the equivalent of a number of holes. 
you know, this is associated with um, kind of like uh, uh, points in momentum space where around which uh, the wave function is like a vortex. But it, it's at that point, you know, I, I find that for me, the language starts to break down and I have real difficulty kind of explaining to, uh, to anybody without equations, you know. What do you think? Yeah, have you ever thought about this? Right, even for the momentum space, it's already difficult to explain what is momentum space, right? What is phase? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, right, okay, so we all maybe agree this is a... From one of the speaker, maybe I'll ask uh, Rago to give some input. Rago, please go ahead. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, uh, like, uh, I have this question that can we put, think it in this way, like... Uh, for example, uh, uh, we are talking about a transition. So uh, we have this uh, uh, scenario where uh, the Hamiltonian is uh, gapless uh, and a scenario where the Hamiltonian is gap, like just a conductor to insulator kind of transition. But uh, just like uh, now, like we are talking about uh, a transformation, can we actually transform a circle or any a mathematical object with a hole to a mathematical object without a hole. I mean, we cannot do that in a continuous uh, transformation, right? So here, even in this case, uh, can we kind of transform the uh, the insulator, that which we call as a topological insulator, into uh, the usual trivial insulator? So can this transition be uh, done uh, in a continuous way? So can we connect these two <coughs> things to understand it better? Well, the answer is no. I mean, that, that's, that's actually a very good point. Uh, thanks for raising it. Uh, the point is that uh, the, a topological insulator is a kind of insulator that cannot be continuously transformed into a standard insulator, like salt, you know, whatever insulating material you're familiar with. Um, and... And that, that's why they were exciting when, they were, when, when these materials were discovered, because uh, physicists used to think that, okay, all insulators are essentially the same, in the same sense that all metals are essentially the same. That's if, you, if you kind of squint and avoid the details and don't think about the fine details too much, the behaviors of every metal is more or less the same. They conduct electricity. And the behavior of every insulator is the same. They prevent electricity from flowing. But uh, the thing that caused a stir when topological insulators were discovered is that not every insulator is the same. There are distinct classes of insulators that cannot be continuously transformed into each other in the same way that you cannot turn a donut into a circle continuous, uh, into a, a sphere continuously. Yeah. But, but I, getting back to the point that I was trying to make uh, in my, my discussion with Pilot, it, it is not so easy to explain what exactly is the thing that makes it difficult for a topological insulator to transform into a conventional insulator. It has something to do with the way that the quantum states are defined in this so-called momentum space. Yeah, uh, it, it, is, it is pretty mathematical. <laughs> It's still the face, but, but um, right, so what is the face, right? So it's still difficult. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I, I guess we shouldn't get stuck on this. So yeah. Right. I think yeah. I have finished. Okay, anyway, <laughs> I, I unresolved problem, yeah. Okay, uh, I guess uh, we discussed before. I guess, uh, am I talking next? Yeah, you can. Yeah, yeah I guess I should, I, I, should, I, I should talk about, well, yeah, what does this have to do with photonics, right? Because... So far, what Pilar was saying, and by the way, feel free to interrupt. This kind, I think, this kind of Twitter space. Uh, the point is to is for this to be a conversation, not 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 like a regular talk. So, so anyway, but uh, just to move the thing of the conversation along, uh, uh, I was told that the next thing to do to ask is well, all this is condensed matter physics, right? The physics of materials. So, what does this have to do with uh, our work? Which is, because we are not working with real materials. Uh, we are working with uh, what are called photonic matter materials. So what's, what's the idea here? Uh, so the idea is that um, as far as the uh, modern physics view of uh, condensed or, or, or of the physics of materials, uh, the what properties of materials has uh, stems ultimately from the way that 
electron waves, which are governed by quantum mechanics, move through a material. So uh, if the electron waves are able to move smoothly through a material, then it's a, it's a, it's a metal. If, if the, there's a so-called band gap, uh, and the waves are, due to destructive interference, prevented from propagating inside the material, then it's an insulator, and so on and so forth. But lots of material properties can be traced to the properties of electron wave functions, right? Um, but the idea that arose in photonics, also coincidentally, starting from the 1980s, is that uh, if, you know, if we, we have been, if, if condensed matter physicists have been studying the, so much the properties of electron waves, then many of those lessons can be carried over uh, to thinking about light waves or electromagnetic waves, right? Um, so just as in a atom, uh, in a material, uh, the electron waves uh, start to behave differently. Band gaps start to appear and so forth when the wavelength of the electron wave becomes comparable to uh, the lattice constant of the underlying material, which is you know several angstroms usually. Uh, so likewise, you should start seeing interesting things happen when an uh, electromagnetic wave moves through a medium uh, that has some kind of periodicity. For example, it's layered. And the period of the layering is on the order of the wavelength. And this is what's called a photonic crystal. And in the uh, most simple case, you can open up a photonic band gap, which is the equivalent of a, a band gap that makes a electrically insulating material and insulating material. Uh, and all this can be done by designing appropriately the, um, the, the, the photonic matter material. Okay, so why is it called a matter material? Basically because we have to go in and start creating uh, this optical materials that have wavelength on the order of the, uh, sorry, they have period on the order of the wavelength that we're interested in. Usually you construct this by hand. Um, in some cases, you can find these materials lying around in, uh, in nature, but most of the time they are man-made, hence so-called matter materials. So the design of photonic matter materials has preoccupied you know, a certain branch of physics for, I don't know, like 40 years since the 1980s, as I mentioned, when the idea of photonic crystals was discovered. Um, but uh, one of the more interesting things that, uh, you know, a lot of us have been working on is the idea of creating uh, topological insulators for light. So if topological insulators can exist for electrons in topological insulating materials, then you can do it for light. And uh, so how do you go about doing this? Well, it depends on what kind of topological insulator you are trying to uh, mimic. So you kind of uh, one of the ways of going about doing this is to kind of look at what uh, class of topological insulator you're interested in. For example, you have the quantum hole, quantum spin hole, those kinds of topological insulators that Byler talked about a few minutes ago, right? And we go in and say, okay, what necessary symmetries or other properties are necessary for this uh, phenomenon to occur? And we will try to reproduce that same effect using um, a photonic matter material by setting up some conditions where the same thing is happening to the electromagnetic waves rather than to the electron waves. Okay? Uh, you uh, know, uh, yeah. some questions, maybe? Yeah, 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 please. Uh, Hilal, please go ahead. Raghav, you can ask next. Uh, this is not a question. I would like to add uh, uh, a point. Uh, in terms of layman description, uh, how the uh, hole or the dunet is connected with this topological insulator. I'm just telling in the layman language. Actually, uh, in a dunet, uh, till we disturb the hole or in a teacup, till we break the hole, it's still remaining uh, one genus. That means it's still uh, having a one hole. Uh, uh, like we, we can bite the uh, dunet along the edges, still it's a dunet. And uh, until we disturb the hole, it is, it is not disturbed. The property is not disturbed, right? Because it still has the one hole. Uh, until we break the cup, uh, not along the hole, but, uh, but in the 
inside the surface of the cup, it is still a one genus hole, uh, genus uh, object that is still having one hole. So that is, um, even if you disturb the property of the uh, object, the donut or the teacup, um, it is not. Uh, it's, 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 it is resisting the. Um, it, it is resisting the. Uh, uh, it is resisting to change its property. So likewise, uh, the electron is traveling along the edges or the surfaces uh, along this material. It is trying to resist any disturbances that might hinder its flow. Actually, it is not scattering like it gets scattered uh, inside the bulk. So like the way a donut resists to change, the electron flow resists to change. So this is why I compared the topological insulator of uh, uh, electrons and the donut. Am I right, Professor? Uh, yeah, there... not, not exactly. Almost there. Almost there. But you're certainly true that um, some kind of robustness is, is embedded in the idea of topology. Um, but the way I would say it usually is like this. Okay, so let's say you take two materials and you put it next to each other. And one material is a topological insulator and the other one is a conventional insulator. Okay, uh, so it's a bit like kind of, and then you can kind of ask yourself, what are the properties of the material as you sweep from one side where it's really deep inside the topological insulator and you sweep across the wall to the other side where it's very much a conventional insulator. This is like trying to take a donut and start biting it, you know? And at some point, uh, you do turn it into a sphere, but this has to be done. At, at some point, you do bite through the hole. And there's, there's something uh, discontinuous happening, right, in between. And what's discontinuous is, uh, in the context of this material, is that uh, somewhere at the junction between these two materials, which is the, the surface between the two materials, uh, the behavior is different from the way it behaves in the two halves. And specifically what happens is that electric current can flow in this, in this region. And this is why the boundary of, the, of a topological insulator is special. Electric currents can flow along the boundary. And that's because the boundary is the region where you're in between a donut and a sphere. So at that point, the, the shape is like, there's something singular about the shape. You're, you're, you're broken through the shape or punctured a hole or something like that. Okay. So can I give an uh, analogy, maybe extend the, the analogy given by Ivan? Maybe you can tell me whether I'm correct or wrong. Uh, let's say we take a, a topological insulator as a biscuit. So it's a rectangular biscuit, maybe with the 5 centimeter on one side and 10 centimeter on another side. So if the topological insulator is like a biscuit, maybe at the at the first instance, before I bite the biscuit, maybe the current is flowing at the edges, say five centimeter in one direction and the ten centimeter that that kind of edge. Now if I bite the biscuit, maybe two centimeter on each side. So we have I mean initially the current doesn't flow in the three centimeter uh, uh, edge. Uh, two centimeter away from the edge. But if I bite two centimeter of the biscuit on each direction, then now the current flows uh, slightly interior to where it was not flowing. So what was insulator became a uh, conducting region now. Is it correct? Well, I think the point is that when you put two materials uh, and they are topologically inequivalent next to each other, uh, the details don't matter, but somewhere something strange must happen. Okay, and this is just saying that the, the, the surface somehow must allow electrical current to flow. The band gap has to close somewhere uh, in, at, at, the, at the interface between those two materials. That's, that's the key point. And, and so, for, so it, the, 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 the robustness comes from the fact that it doesn't matter. So, for example, if the junction between these two materials is a it's a flat surface, or if it's a wavy surface, or if it's some twisty, twisting and turning in one way or the other, or it's a very rough surface, you know, it, it doesn't matter. That electricity can flow along this surface. And that's because the materials on the two sides of that surface 
have different topology. They are, they are so-called topologically inequivalent to each other. Okay, thank you. Raghav, you have something to say? Uh, no, like, uh, I have a question, but uh, I thought of asking it in the uh, like, end of the session. But I like, just will, uh, I'm curious that there are this class of uh, insulators which actually, like, which do not, uh, you know, come under the traditional Landau, uh, mm, this theory. But even in um, ultra-cold atoms, you have something called Mott insulator. But it is, I think it is not topological, uh, like, as uh, we are talking about this uh, churn insulator. Like, is there any universal theory or something that kind of, uh, you know, talk about uh, whether a system can have uh, this kind of transition or not? Is there any universal or uh, um, a grand theory that from which we can actually uh, uh, talk about this transition? Okay, I can answer unless Pilar wants to say something. No? Okay, if not, then essentially there is. Uh, people have classified uh, the full family of topological insulators. Uh, it turns out that uh, there's a lot of them. <laughs> there's this so-called periodic table of topological insulators so that differ from each other in terms of like the dimension of space that they occur in, uh, that there's various symmetries and internal symmetries that they, uh, uh, that they exist under and so forth. So uh, this rich variety of different topological insulators is also what makes this an interesting research topic. Um, because, you know, you are, we, we, people can come up with uh, different realizations of topological insulators that have different properties. And, and also in the case of uh, photonic topological insulators, every time you come up with a new kind of topological insulator, it requires some fresh thinking about how to meet the necessary conditions. And, and at this point, I think we should really start talking about um, uh, the, 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 the topic of the paper because, you know, it's, uh, this is so far just introduction, but we really ought to start talking about this 3D chain insulator business. Uh, so maybe this is a good point for, for Gui to, uh, to talk. So we are, I introduced the 3D insulator. Actually, before I, before I introduce my, my book specifically, I would like to share some of my thoughts of the of the topical topical phase because I just uh, get it learned. So so three four years before I still have a same problem of understanding what's the what's the meaning of topical insulator. Even though before that I have also heard this point many many times, but uh, at the beginning I, I read a lot of papers and uh, was a lot of online videos. And talk with each other. I still haven't understand what's the meaning of public public insulator. So, but how do I? I think I really understand what's the meaning of, of you is is aside from the view of the barrier phase. So because in 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 quantum mechanic mechanics we we have learned the the barrier phase. Actually, barrier phase is 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 a lot. Of, um, not every, every every very book have a chapter of of very face, but uh, I remember um, graphics graphics has a has a textbook. Um, kind of my face, they have they have it has a chapter meaning uh, talk about the talk about the the very face. and I have learned that uh, after I learned the very face, I understand what's the meaning of of the topological phase because they are very 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 related to each other. So what's the meaning of of of, of the very face is that. Uh, if you consider a Hamiltonian, this Hamiltonian is it's a lot, it's a lot, a lot stable. It can be very, it can vary um, along some parameters. For example, a parameter of lambda or, or anything like that. It can be uh, a parameter of time, anything like that. If you continuous, continuous and very slowly change the Hamiltonian of this term, after you, you, you start from an initial state. And change very closely, very very little, and very slowly along a parameter. This parameter is a is a periodic parameter. So after some time, after some after some loop, it will go back to the initial state. The, the interesting thing is that the phase of the of the initial state and the final state is different. 
it has two contributions. First one is the 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 dynam dynamic phase. That's just a uh, 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 evolution of the of the for example it, the time. It's 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 very easy to understand. There's a additional one phase. It's called the barrier phase. So barrier phase uh, is a is a is a very is a very 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 interesting because it have have to be recognized by many many scientists before. So barrier is the first one to to realize that uh, even though even though you the, the, uh, you back to your in the, in the state after some some parameters you you will have a different phase. So this this is named by the barrier phase. So barrier phase is it's sometimes called the geometric phase, geometric phase. Because it because the, the the loop because the whether the barrier phase is zero or non zero it depends on depends on the on the on the path that means the loop of the of the of your of your trees. So sometimes the if sometimes the choose the the, the loop you choose the, if you calculate barrier phase it can be zero. Sometimes it, you calculate the the barrier phase for some loop it will be non zero. So. Because it depends on the geometry, geometry of your of your loop, so it sometimes called the geometric phase. So what's the relationship between the barrier phase and the topological? So I have said the Hamiltonian, that is the state of the of of, of system. The Hamiltonian is related to a parameter, for example, a lambda, a time, and anything like that. But in topological phase case, the 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 parameter can be a, can be the Momentum, the key, for example, the momentum, the, 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 the key of the momentum. That means if you, if, 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 if the, if the system, if the homotonia of the system is changing by changing another key, if you, for example, you, you, you trace all the, all the key in, in the first brain zone, in, in the physical space, the barrier phase will be, will be like zero zone, or zero zone. For conventional insulator, if you if you if you if you if you calculate the barrier phase for the for the for the trace of the brain zone, the barrier phase is zero. So it's a conventional insulator. The most interesting part is uh, is the lateral case. The lateral case is just the topological insulator. So that's that's the how the relationship between the between the between the barrier phase and the top topological phase. So in a, in a tennis later, if you calculate the the uh, if you calculate the, the barrier phase for the whole brain you know, for example in two D in two D two D tennis later, you you can you can choose you start from initial uh, uh, initial initial state for 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 T zero, and you choose all the two D momentum phase in uh, along the two D brain zone, and then you back to your initial state. The, the the barrier phase will be non zero. And, and then if you if you have a barrier phase, you can you let it over over two pi. That content is called the chain number. So so that's the that, that's the difference between the chain number and the barrier phase. So why do we call, call why do we call it a, call it a change later? That is just because it, because the the Hamiltonian of the of two D. Of two D system, if you calculate the number for for a band, the number is then zero. So it 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 will change it. So it's called a tensor. Actually, sometimes uh, in quantum mechanics, they, they call the tensor to to be quantum Hall, quantum Alonso Hall effect, such as the how just like the previous by last side. But uh, I prefer to call it a uh, tensor because <laughs> even though even though even though uh, most of the quantum analysis you have is 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 because the, the external magnitude is, is zero, and that's that's, that's why you call it phenomena. Phenomena is the phenomena for effect is, is the magnitude is zero. But for, but for some quantum quantum analysis effect, the magnitude is is less than zero. So I think the the the, the most important difference between the quantum analysis effect and the quantum analysis effect is the is whether it's uh, insulated or not. For quantum content, content core effect, uh, the the platform is uh, just a uh, uh, inertial gas, so it it doesn't have have a, have a periodic structure. 
So it, it cannot be treated as an insulator. But for quantum quantum Lorentz Hodge effect, it's a, it must be an insulator. And it, and the and the phase and the topological topological is coming from the from the um, uh, from the phase of the band structure. So I prefer to call it uh, a twin insulator. As I think most of the most of the, uh, best, the, best, the best name to to describe our system. So, hmm. Yeah, we should probably start talking. I mean, part, uh, is 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 uh, getting pretty late in the session. We should start talking about. <laughs> we still haven't talked about what our, our work is about. So maybe I I think let, let's just skip everything and just quickly talk about what uh, our paper is about. Okay. Yes. Yes. So. Yeah, I mean, for all other theoretical details, I think. Yeah, I I, I don't know. I don't know to what extent we have a success in actually explaining this to anybody who doesn't actually know the material already. It's a long-running problem. So, so anyway, let, let, let's, 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 let's just talk about uh, the, the paper. Yeah, so let's get us at what, what we really, really achieved. So, previously, 2D sensors have been, have been realized by a lot of platforms. So for 2D sensors, it must be a 2D system, just the SLM side. So it, it just, uh, for example, parallel along the X and Y direction. But what we really achieved it to a real 3D, 3D material because most of our system, our world is a 3D, 3D world. So most important thing is that we really achieved a 3D things later. So if you if you can you can check our slide 11. That's our sample of of our experience setup of our sample. You can see it's a, it's a, actually it's a, it's a photonic crystal. You have to check that. Uh, so for the for the green for the green one, it's a uh, it's the copper layer, and uh, and uh, uh, there are uh, a lot of a lot of copper layers stacked along the z, z direction, and uh, be, be, between the between the between the copper layers, you will find the the geomagnetic uh, uh, those. That's the uh, you can see the, it's the uh, it's the uh, it's the. Uh, uh, it's it's a, it's a pillars, pillars like uh, the black pillars. It's um, put put in, inside a micro 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 form to fix the operations. The most important, the most difficult part to realize the CD thing today is to break the temperature symmetry. Tem temperature symmetry. So in our platform, we just need to to add the the magnetic field around the around the z direction, or the z direction to to break the temperature symmetry. So, so uh, slide twelve have so our experience setup. So it's a it's a electromagnet to use the to break use to induce the magnet magnetic field. So we just put our sample inside of the inside of the uh, electromagnet, and uh, uh, the, and uh, within the within the region of the of the photonic crystal, uh, the magnetic field will be will be uniform. Along the z direction, and because of the, we can also and also we can tune the magnet the strength of the magnetic field to tune the uh, the, the strength of the temperature breaking. So the most thing, so uh, if you if you go to the eleven for the slide, eleven, and to the to the slide field transition to various metal, you will find that. Uh, if we if we uh, go to slide thirteen, you will find that if you if you um, turn the magnetic field uh, strings, you will if you, if you if you don't have the magnet magnet magnetic field, it will be just a a, a tube insulator. That means it's just a constant insulator. It, it nothing related to the topological. But as long as you introduce some magnetic field on the the direction and tune the tune strings, it will have the field transition. From a from a tube insulator to a CD insulator, and between the right. two, yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe let me cut it, cut it because this is getting pretty technical. Yeah. Um, so I, I think to summarize, I would say that uh, the main uh, the main achievement is to realize a three dimensional 
uh, topological insulator of a very special type, right? The three-dimensional churn insulator, which previously has not been discovered, uh, including uh, in material in condensed matter. So, so this is this is first achieved in photonics, and and there's no to this day there is no corresponding uh, condensed matter or, or, or material uh, uh, realization of this. Um, but how would you, but you know, I mean, various kinds of 3D topological insulators in photonics have been uh, achieved to date. So, so if you were challenged, why, how would you say why, why this one deserves to be in nature, right? Because it's not the first three-dimensional topological insulator. It's not the first 3D topological insulator in photonics. So why do we get into nature? <laughs> yes. I said the 2D itself is, is, is already hard to, to be implemented. For example, people, uh, you have had a paper just realized uh, 2D, uh, 3D topological insulator, the spin, spin polarized. So for 2D, it, it, it's, it, it's, it's hard because uh, for several aspects. For example, the first one is that um, um, it's hard to, to get a complete gap in, in a 3D photon crystal because you have, must have the KXK by the KZ direction. The momentum space must be uh, calculated in all directions. So that's the first, uh, first change. The second change is that uh, so uh, even for 2D, for 2D things, it's also it's already it's already been very hard. For example, the the 2D things that has been realized just uh, just uh, um, just uh, ten years before in in real materials because we must have break the time of the symmetry group. Uh, mm. Yeah, Pilar, what, what do you think? What, 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 how would you justify <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> us getting into nature? <laughs> okay, yeah, because it's a very good question. Okay, I can, I can simply answer it this way. So for 2D strain insulator, right, we use a number of holes, one, two, three, four, right, to characterize it. But now in 3D, we found that this number of holes, one, two, three, four, they have directions. So they are, they are, they are vectors in the space. Right. right, because it's the number of holes if you look in the x direction, the number of holes if you look in the y direction, the number of holes Correct. if you look in the z direction, Correct. roughly speaking, yeah. Correct. So this is a conceptual change, okay, from the scalars, okay, one, two, three, four integers, to the vectors, okay, which is the uh, uh, numbers with directions, right? Yeah. Yep. Yep. So you can see that, okay, if you apply, okay, previously, I think uh, you have also uh, 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 explained, okay, how we, how we, how we, how we have the surface states between a top of the different uh, materials, where the surface states can carry the uh, uh, electricity, right, in, in electronic systems. So now, when the number of holes, okay, or the so-called topological environment, they have directions, right? When you have directions, the vectorial property of the of this direction of this uh, chain numbers or this number of holes they will bring out to a uh, very exchange uh, phenomena I think I think we have a uh, slides in a uh, uh, in a uh, uh, the last slide okay the last slides okay this la the last slides are okay, the so-called half link right so they can uh, previously, you have you have explained the surface states, right? The, 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 uh, on the surface between uh, topolo topologically distinct materials, you have surface states to carry electricity, right? But over here, we have a, a topological material for light. So these are surface states for light, but uh, physics is the same. Okay. We also have the uh, 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 the uh, vectorial okay vectorial extension or generalization generalization of the number of holes over here. So you can see that one typical phenomena is the so-called Hopf link. Okay, Hopf link is a uh, if you think of the uh, Olympic loops, right? Olympic loops, are five loops together. But if you can see the two adjacent loops, okay, they are connected as a link. This is the simplest link, so-called Hopf link. Okay, it's a mathematical structure. So then you can see that these surface states, you can see that over here in the last slide, like slide seven, uh, 17, correct? If you measure the surface states, right? If you measure the surface states, 
then you can see that okay on the right we have four lines together right four lines okay, four curves four curves together so it turns out that it turns out that okay if you connect the upper surface uh, the upper boundary and the lower boundary together so you become a uh, if you wrap it if you wrap it around right connect the upper boundary and lower boundary of the figure together this is the square but if you connect connect them together you will form a cylinder correct and then the left boundary and the right boundary if you also connect them together okay and then wrap them together you will form a new okay torus surface okay torus surface correct so this torus surface is very important in uh, in uh, physics because for the 2d brain zone or 2d uh, momentum space this is exactly the surface okay this is exactly the torus surface to describe it so you can see that if you place all these four lines the four curves right on this torus surface you can see that they connect together so these four curves become two curves, okay? Become two curves. Here we use different colors to characterize it. So you can see these two curves, they happen to form a hop of link, basically two components uh, for one link, right? But these two, uh, uh, this link structure, they, they, they appear on the torus surface. So these are also called torus, uh, torus uh, link. Uh, so these are very. Uh, this is, I think this is the first time that this kind of uh, strange links, right? For example, uh, is quite similar to the Olympic loops. This kind of strange uh, uh, mathematical mathematical structures have been demonstrated, okay, in terms of the surface states, okay, in terms of surface of surface states on the surfaces of uh, the uh, topological topological materials. Hilal, you want oh. some comment or question? Yeah. Yeah, I have a question. I, I don't know whether I have missed it. Um, my understanding of uh, topology mathematically is um, a two-dimensional sheet and uh, sphere surface are the similar. Despite, despite the uh, sphere is three-dimensional, the topologically both are equivalent. But you are telling that there are difference. That there, there is a difference between two-dimensional and three-dimensional uh, topological. Uh, materials. Uh, did I miss something? Uh, I, I don't really understand. No, uh, yeah, maybe I, I can cut it here. Uh, this example of the genus, okay, uh, meaning a, uh, the number of holes in the surface and so forth, this genus, I, genus idea is an example of topology. But there are, mathematically, uh, there are many, many other uh, manifestations of uh, 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 Rather, the, the, the definition of topology mathematically can extend to lots of other kinds of settings uh, that go far beyond this um, genus of uh, two-dimensional two -dimensional surfaces. Uh, so in particular, there are ways of classifying topological objects that are not just number of holes. So for example, one familiar one in, uh, that occurs in uh, condensed matter physics is that uh, quantum spin hole insulators is a class of topological insulator where the topological classification is done using a digit that is zero or one. Zero, this, this is the so-called Z2 topological number. So this is unlike the number of holes, the genus, it is not zero, one, two, three, four, five, and so forth. It is not described by a, a, a natural number. So, so basically the, the, the concept of topology is more general, uh, but the basic idea is that you know there's something, there's some quantity, there's some property that is resistant to change, and, and that materials can have this property where they cannot turn into other materials. But exactly what that quantity is, or how it's characterized, uh, de depends on depends on what what uh, specific property you're looking at, what kind of topology you're looking at. Oh, thank you, thank you, Professor. Uh, maybe at this, uh, was there another question? Because I, I, I would, I would like to ask a question actually, um, which which is to do with uh, just okay. So I, I came into this project kind of like through a press the process of uh, a diabetic continuation. As I got more and more involved along the way, uh, so I'm not too clear on the beginnings of the project. So, so how, who came up with the idea? Tyler, was it you or was it something that Quicken was, was working on and he kind of came up with the idea? What was your, uh, uh, Quicken and Tyler, what, what's your recollection of the origin of this? Yes, first we just, uh, our initial, initial, initial thought is very simple. We thought uh, um, 
we have two D translator. You don't remember? <laughs> yeah, I, I, we have two D. We have two D translator. Why not? Uh, why not? We 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 stack the two D translator from a three D translator. Just uh, like uh, yours, yours, yours previous list of people. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, I think. I I think the original idea is very simple. We just want to stack it up to to form a three D structure. Very simple, okay. But we, in the beginning, we didn't know that there's a, a completely okay unexplored. Um, this is this is this is a completely unexplored land okay, for us to explore, right? So we 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 went back to check the literature and find out that okay, uh, although people have kind of talked about it, there's still a lot of unknowns, okay, inside. So it's, yeah, I, mean, I remember. Yeah. I remember the paper went through quite a few rounds. Uh, the first draft of the paper I saw was totally different from what ended up being eventually, right? So, so somehow this project was definitely not one of those things where you go in and say, "Okay, I'm looking for this," and then we will go and do the experiment and then write it up. It, it was something much more complicated than that. Uh, and I don't remember the beginning of it, so so it had to do with you telling Quicken to just just stack stack up this. Uh, it, it, it was not me. Okay, in the beginning, it was not me. I think it was uh, uh, Ihao, our former postdoc. Okay, who told yeah uh, Quicken to try to stack it, try to stack stack it up to form a three D structure. Very simple, just stack it up. But 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 nobody nobody knew that the, 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 the okay. Well, what is, what is, what is the unique property for it? Right, right. But later because on, at first, at first, we uh, wanted to sell it as uh, like a three-dimensional analog of a Houdin model, something like that, right? Correct, correct. And later on, we found that okay, at least there's uh, the phase change is is uh, very unique, very special because it will connect the uh, topological insulator with the topological semi-metals uh, in the in the same platform. Okay. Yeah, I think this is already this is already a big thing. Okay, uh, from my point of view, but uh, um, so we move on to we move on to explore to to uh, study more details. Okay, about the phase change, the phase transition uh, between the topological insulator and the uh, semi-metal phase. So that is how you can see that. Okay, uh, then then there's a single pair of wear points get involved. And then you will see a single Fermi arc, so on and so forth. Right, right, yeah. But also, okay, I think this is the f the second version. Okay, you see, you see the uh, manuscript, right? Yeah, I, I, we went through the selling point many, many times. Uh, I, there was a lot of discussion about which aspect to focus on. Correct, correct, but. It turns out that okay, although this is uh, a, a unique phenomenon for the uh, topological phase transition or the single Fermi arc, um, it's kind of already known. Okay, although it's in theory, right? Uh, it's kind of known in theory. So people have already talked about it. Okay, in some old literature. Yeah, yeah, so but the weird thing is they never they never talked about it directly. You know, it was always kind of a comment or something like that. Nobody ever actually. Publish a paper about three D translation. That's the weird thing. That's the thing. Okay, that's the thing. I think it has been taken for granted. Okay, I think this three D translator has been taken for granted. Okay, this people assume that this is just a three D three D stack of a of a two D translator. That's all. But it's not the end of the story because this there there there. Okay, if you if you if you consider the direction of a chain number, okay, and and, and then generalize generalize yet into a vector, so there's still uh, some new phenomena to 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 explore. So I think people have people have missed this point. Okay, in the past, uh, very long, very long time over. Um, I don't know. Okay, forty, fifty years. No, I don't think it's fifty years. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, like, maybe 20, 20 years. I don't know. Nineteen eighties, right? Okay, sure. How did more than nineteen eighties? Okay, yeah, forty, yeah. forty years, forty. Years. Yes. Yeah. Uh, can I ha can I ask one question? Sure, please. Okay. Um. Actually, I have been following topological photonics. Um. Uh. 
when uh, Peruzzo, Albert Peruzzo published on uh, quantum interferometer on a waveguide. So since then I've been, you know, uh, a bit interested in this because I'm, I'm a, a quantum computing startup guy. So I'm a bit interested in uh, building a quantum computer. So I, so from that point, I would like to know what stage it is. Is, is it at uh, proof of concept level? Uh, I would say that it's more, right now, it's very much a fundamental science level. So as in we have this device and we are able to demonstrate this phenomenon it does not actually serve any function yet at this stage. I, I saw a, a laser, uh, the triangular laser. You okay, yeah, sorry, sorry. Uh, they're just referring to the 3D churn insulator. <laughs> the 3D churn insulator. Uh, for, for, you, you're asking about topological photonics as a whole. Uh, people are trying to do stuff with it. Uh, so, so, yeah, yeah, people are trying to use this to... Um, create better lasers, although I think, you know, I mean, we, Tyler and I also have done some work on this recently um, and are continuing to do so, but it, it's uh, still quite far from commercialization, basically because um, laser people don't really like to go in and design very, very complicated fabrication structures for lasers, you know. Um, but anyway, there, there's some hope. Uh, people are also the other the other possible avenue of research that people people are looking into for application is uh, if people ever start doing quantum optics uh, on chip or if you want to start doing uh, start sending signals and processing for example terahertz signals on chip uh, then this kinds of uh, topological waveguides are actually a great design for doing it uh, but all this depends on this kind of on chip technologies getting off the ground which is uh, not 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 uh, on chip photonic technologies. I mean, which, which is not for uh, to be taken for granted at this point. Okay, thank you. Kidong, you know, is there any magnon analog of chain uh, insulators? Hmm. Good question. Um, I I think there are already a few a few uh, papers talking about the. Uh, uh, right, uh, the, the, the quantum Hall effect, okay, quantum Hall phenomena uh, with the uh, meganons. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I have vague memories of this. I, I, don't, I don't remember myself. I mean, meganons are waves like any other, so if you can manipulate yeah. them to the same... Uh, extent that you can manipulate electron waves or electromagnetic waves, then uh, in principle, you know, you should be able to create band gaps and even topological band gaps. But of course, uh, uh, whether the conditions are possible for you to open up topological band gaps depends on the details, right, of the material. Okay. Any other question? Okay, I think then we should. Uh, then we'll, we'll stop. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So thank you, Professor Wiley, Professor Yudong, and uh, It was very mm -hmm. interesting in the interactive session. And also, uh, let me thank the audience for patiently listening and asking questions, interacting with the speakers. So this is the second space of uh, anti physics and uh, look forward to more uh, spaces in the near future. Thank you all. Good night. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. Good night. Bye-bye. Good night. Bye-bye.